All right, let's go. All right, all right, Tim. How about Jim Montgomery getting fired uh, off the Boston Bruins? Yeah, I know. And the funny thing was, Dal, Dad and I were watching the first couple of games, and you looked at the Bruins, and you said something's up. You could just tell that the Bruins weren't happy. And uh, when you have Pasternak and uh, Marchand, you know, two, two good guys like that going, and he, and he pushed Marchand. On the bench, yeah, yeah. they had a big argument. Uh, Must be tough though, Dad. Like he, he was a, you know, I hate to say a lame duck, but he was a bit of a lame duck coach, right? Didn't have a contract after this year, and 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 he never, and they never signed. You think you think they'd want to keep him, eh? But you know what? He probably probably had trouble with Sweeney, the general manager. Yeah, well, that's the thing. A lot of people in Boston, they're talking about Sweeney and Cam Neely. How many coaches have they gone through? Holy Dinah. Yeah. And and good coaches too. I know. What was what was his record? Montgomery was 120, 42, and 23. Damn. <laughs> and a Jack Adams won 20. <laughs> and, he, and he won the Jack Adams and he won the Jack Adams before. Jack Adams is a, is a, how would I say it? it There's a bit it, of a curse to it. Yeah. It, it is is a curse because it, most of them get fired. After. Yeah. They said in the pa- the last seven Jack Adams winners Five have been fired within three years. Tough to win that Jack Adams award. Yeah, you don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing you always said to me, Dad, when, when a coach is there for five years. You stop listening for after five years. You, you know all the tricks. You know all the trades. I remember when I got fired, that uh, half the team come over. Yeah, they all came over. Yeah, came remember to the that? house. Yep. Yeah. Park, park, and then. Park and Stan and Schmatzi and everybody and stuff like that. So, so what did Doug Adams say to you when uh, when he hired you the first year well, in Rochester? I heard, I heard him in the background saying, "Ah, they're hired to be fired." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he, he, and he fired me. Yeah, welcome to the team. <laughs> oh, and I remember. I remember he brought him in. Me, he brought him in, and he was smoking a, a, a black cigar. Or black uh, those little sil- c- cigarette little, yeah, little, oh, little, little, what do they call them cigarellos yeah. cigarellos yes yeah yeah cigarellos and uh, honest to God <laughs> we're making a change in your department for about three seconds I thought who the hell is in my department <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it was only me so speaking of that dad it just we'll, I'll get off topic here a little bit you watching the games last night. Ottawa is still struggling, and they've been in a rebuild for how many years? No, but they're better. They're, 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 they're better, but they're not going to make the playoffs, and no. they're struggling. Montreal, since they made that run, and, and Weber and uh, and Carey Price left, they've been in a rebuild, and yeah. I, I don't see them. They haven't gotten any better. No. When you took over Rochester Americans, your f- first year as coach and GM, you, won't, you didn't have any players, and you had like six weeks. To- I remember I... Uh, Bob Clark phoned me, and he said, uh, "We have one player." I think I'm thinking one player. He said, "Who is the player?" He says, "You." <laughs> <laughs> so you put the team, and then you 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 had no affiliation, and you you made the playoffs that first year, and you know you beat out teams that were connected with Boston and New York and Chicago and everything. What was your idea of building? That expansion. Team. I wanted tough wingers, tough wingers. I didn't defense didn't have to be tough. I wanted wingers that were tough. I remember the day that Dennis Ball phoned me and he said, "Do you want Battleship Kelly?" Uh, I uh, actually danced. That's right. You're, you're <laughs> so I happy. actually danced. I, I was so happy. I says, "We just made the playoffs." Right. So, but your but your centermen weren't that. You didn't have to, like you had uh, Dave uh, Bob Ellett, who's the son of the ex leave Dave Ellett. Like you didn't have very tough. No, centers. I didn't. Not centermen didn't have to be tough. The wingers had to be tough. And your defense wasn't big and tough. No, and, and the defense wasn't tough. But boy, those yeah, wingers. the wingers were. <laughs> they, they were over the top tough. But but and then you, then you guys and then you put the system in and then. Well, we we had a system, and you know, I I picked that up from Schmatzy, Bobby Schmatz. 
Uh, I remember he would be out at the point all the time. And I, I used to think, what the hell is this guy doing out at the point? As soon as the puck had come out, the guy is back, back right out. And, and he wouldn't let them in. Like he wouldn't let them, you know, when he the wouldn't puck, let him pinch. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. And Bobby Schmatz was the guy that uh, that I picked that off. Yeah. I said, I watch the National Hockey League now. If they'd only be six feet uh, out, out, out farther, they would have. They would have. Uh, like you had him right out at the point. Right so if the, the puck came out to the point, the, the defense weren't. Yeah, you're right were, on top of the defense. Right man, on yeah. top of the defense, and nine times out of ten, you're right. Your defense would back out. Yeah. The way the lead, like. The, the league is now they're they're about halfway up the boards yeah well you and, know you and know, they're in no man's land so they got to run out to the point it's too late but if it's the pucks forth. in the corner but that was your thing to build to build the team is you wanted a, the toughest team tough wingers skilled center and a defense that could move the puck i wanted the defenseman to move the puck as soon as they touched it bang put it out to the point and uh, and nobody picked it up. And you know why? I think what happened was that there were so many teams in the league then, they, they, they didn't pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, back then, too, they, they didn't scout back then, right? No. You know, but, uh, yeah, hard to believe. You're 120, 42, and 23, and you get fired. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you can't. He'll find a job, though. Oh, well, there's about six teams waiting for him. So I think we, we cursed... Ovechkin. Yeah. And he said, boy. Ovechkin, he never gets hurt. Ovechkin, he never gets hurt. Then he goes out and he breaks a leg. <laughs> yeah, he, he'll be out. No, he won't. He won't He won't break the record this year. No. Well, yeah. well he's only got 20-some goals, so you never know. He might be back. Then the one thing we were talking a little bit about, that we were watching, you know, we watched a little bit of football. I just can't get over, Dell. The New York Giants cut their quarterback, Daniel Jones. He, had a, he just signed a $160 million contract. And out of that, you got a thirty-six million dollars signing bonus, and he gets ninety-two million out of that hundred and sixty. They write him a check. Oh, bad. Yeah, I mean that is really something. <laughs> bye bye. Here's six. <laughs> here's some money. <laughs> like uh, Gretzky. Let's see. Gretzky, Crosby, uh, Bobby Orr. Yeah. And and there's nah. like I think like guys like Eiserman and Mario and and you know yeah. all those there's some guys out there like McKinnon, I think McDavid, if they were making a hundred thousand, a hundred million or six hundred million, yeah. they'd play the same. Yeah, they would. They would. Yeah. What'd you think of that hit uh, on uh, Nurse? Well, yeah. Well, we talked about it the other day. I didn't. I. Well, it was it was. You should have got five games. You called it. You said five games. Yeah, five games. He uh, got, he, well, he didn't deserve five games, but... Yeah, but, gee, Nurse kind of buried him a little bit. Like, I thought, you know, normally you kind of no, go, well... I, I, wrote, I wrote down what he said here, just a minute. There's an onus on me to be aware where everybody is, but there's also an onus that's throwing the hit to the body. Even if you put yourself in a bad spot, there's lots of six-foot-foot-four hockey players to hit. Uh, one, not one piece was touched other than my head. If you can argue with that intent, but there are certain guys in the league, every shift they go out there and they try to inflict pain. Well, not, I mean, that's, it's not the name, name, name of the game. <laughs> yeah, you go, yeah, and? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think it's pretty uh, obvious what's going on there. When asked if, if Reed's apologized to Nurse after the game, he said, not really. Yeah, he said it didn't matter. Well, if the guy apologized. Well, he said, the question he said, uh, when asked if it mattered that Reeves apologized to Nurse after the game, Nurse said, "Not really." So oh. Nurse will, will but yeah. Reeves will say, "Well, he got a goal the next game." Who Nurse did? Yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I just don't like. I, you know, I think Reeves. You know, it was it was a hit. He got five games and stuff like that. But you don't need to bury the guy in the paper like that. No, there's no point. Yeah. He got Ma- his punishment. Matthews is in Germany. Uh, uh, Leafs record without Matthews is is thirty five nineteen and two, an average of three point two goals per game, and the power play is uh, clicking along at thirty percent. Yeah, what? yeah, like that's like you go. They're, they're, they're they thirty-five might not, and nineteen without Matthews in the lineup, and their power play is thirty percent. So all of a sudden, you're going, "Geez, we could save twelve million dollars <laughs> a, a year." They improved. <laughs> they, they improve. 
Quite true, quite true. Yeah, but that's kind of, you always said that, Dad, that sometimes when a superstar is out, the other guys kind of I remember when Bobby Orr. Did you guys, like I asked you this once before, but did you, did you guys rely on him too much? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I think we did. I think we relied on him. With, uh, well, with the goal out there, the three minutes yeah, to well, go. Yeah, well, Bobby. Bobby will Bobby score. score. Yeah. yeah. Well, hard not to, though. You know, it's like Edmonton. You said, did they think Edmonton relied on Gretzky too much? Well, probably they did, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Well, Dad, the Jets keep rolling. They lost last night to Nashville, but uh, um, they have the best home record, 17-3, and three, and they're 8-3 and three on the road. And they're in the top five in power plays, and only two guys in the top 20 scoring. And they're yeah. in the top of the league, but Hellebuck. Yeah. Hellebuck is uh, second. In uh, goals against and save percentage. And best save percentage. Yeah. So right. how about Kyle Connors against Pittsburgh? You got a Gordie Howe hat trick. So, we got, so do you know what a Gordie Howe hat trick is, Del? Yes. yes. A goal and an assist and a fight. And, and he, Gordy did, did it one period. Yes, to get a true, <laughs> to get a, true uh, a, a pure Gordie Howe hat trick, not only do you have to do it in one period, you have to do it in the first period. That's a that's well, a pure Gordie Howe hat trick, but he got a hat trick and he fought uh, Crosby, and uh, the guy after said to, to Connors, "Did you know it was Sidney Crosby you were fighting?" He, yes, I knew it was Sidney Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> so Dad Calgary won four in a row. I think they won five in a row. Four home games in a row. Won last night in a shootout, and uh, they seem to have a little bit of an edge to them. I said somebody's going to take over that Calgary team and really, really turn them into something. And because they're too good a team. Yeah, but they're finally getting the goalie, goaltending. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they, like that Dustin Wolf. He was that little goalie. Yeah. You know, like he, he's kind of settled in. He's, he's eight and two this year, you know. And then the other goalie that played last night, I forget his name, played really well. But they weren't getting the goaltending before. No. And that was the thing. Everybody said it was, it was, it was like, I'll say it again. When Sutter was fired, the year he was fired, yeah. he had the Flames averaged the most shots for yeah. per game, and they averaged the least shots against per game. And I, they I fired believe. Sutter. And you wondered what the problem was. <laughs> yeah, between the pipes. All right, that was the first question. All right. All right. From F- Hab Hater. <laughs> Graves, the LA Kings beat the Leafs in seven games in the 1993 semifinals. Remember uh, Kerry Frazier and the Gretzky non-call in game six? Oh, I remember that one. I remember that one. Yeah. The Kings went on to lose to Patrick Roy and the Habs. Do you think the Leafs could have beat the Habs that year? Yes, I do. And uh, Game six, the Leafs tied up. Remember, one the Clark tied it up. And uh, Dougie Gilmore was just Dougie Gilmore and Wendell Clark were just out of this world, and he was he was. He. And uh, back then was if the rule was if a player high sticked a player and cut the player, it was a five minute major, and the player got kicked out of the game. And Gretzky cut Gilmore. He, he, cut didn't, him. Mean to. he didn't, didn't mean to. He didn't mean to, but he still cut him. Cut him a good one. He was really bleeding. Yeah, he was. And nobody saw anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> And and and, uh, and Kerry Fraser was the ref. Referee Kerry Fraser was the ref. Remember the time? <laughs> oh, yeah, he was. It was a it was a playoff game Montreal and Quebec in Montreal. So you know how crazy those games were. Yeah. The fans were just going insane. So there was a play, and Kerry Price or uh, Kerry Fraser raised his hand for a penalty. And Montreal had the puck. Okay. So so Patrick Waugh ran to the bench because, you know, get the <laughs> yeah, extra guy yeah, yeah. on. So, I remember. I remember this. So the puck goes into Quebec's end, and Quebec gets the puck and starts roaring back. He still doesn't blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Waugh stops. He runs back to his net. Like, oh, my God. And then Thibodeau ran, you know, ran to the bench to get the extra guy in Montreal. And then Montreal picked up the puck again. <laughs> and then Thibodeau stopped. He ran back. And the yeah, next but- thing you know, there was like hope. So then finally... I think the linesman blew the whistle. Yes, he just blew the whistle. And, and but he, they talked to him after, and he said he was getting divorced. So. Yeah, he was having a tough time. Ron said that he was having a tough time. But what happened in that that game six? So he doesn't call a penalty, yeah. and the, like should have called a penalty because everybody saw it, right? And he doesn't call a penalty because it's maybe because it was Gretzky. Maybe. And then remember what he did. It went game went into overtime. He gave Glenn Anderson. Oh. I, a nothing hit, like just a hit. It was like it was nothing. 
Game it was bo- nothing. Game of boarding penalty and Edmonton uh, Gretzky scores the of winner. Of course, Gretzky. <laughs> Gretzky. Gretzky said that was, uh, and the game back in Toronto was his best game. Yeah, then game seven, Gretzky just took over. He went behind the net, and you should look this up on YouTube. He went. It was behind the net, and Dave Ellett was standing in front of the net, and uh, and then our uh, pot van was in front. Felix pot van was in the was in net, and, and Ellett was in front of the net. Gretzky was behind the net with the puck. And he's, he, he just stepped around, and he bounced it right off Ellett's skate into the oh, net. Oh, really? Uh, and he did it on purpose. Did it on purpose. Oh. And that, I think that was the winner. And yeah. then they went on to win. But So you think, though, if Montreal and Toronto met that year, you think Toronto would have won? Yep, I do. I remember the, talking to Ron, though, and he tells the story that you guys were watching the morning skate. So yeah. L.A. came on, did their morning skate. Then Toronto came on and did their morning skate. And Toronto was up three games to two. So this game and then back home. And you said to Ron, Toronto's not winning the series. Yeah. I just had a feeling that, uh, well, I just, uh, they're not winning the series. He says, what do you mean they're not winning the series? They're going to have a game back there and everything. And I said, they're not winning the series. They're not winning the series. You just had a feel? I just had a feel. Did you feel Toronto was going to lose or... L.A. was going to win. No, I had uh, L.A. was going to win. Yeah, Gretzky took over. Yeah, Gretzky took over. <laughs> I never forgot that. I never forgot. I'm yelling at the TV. Yeah. Who do you think Who do you think cut him? <laughs> who do you think cut Gilmore? Yeah. I mean, who, who, who else do you think cut him? Do you, one of his own players? Yeah, no. But was it, it was in the face-off. It, it, it was in a misguided face-off. Yeah. It was, uh, had to do it over again. He got cut, yeah. Yeah. That was, that's the closest the Leafs ever came yeah, so in the close. last 50 years or whatever to win the Stanley <laughs> yeah, that Cup. That was the closest. 